I'm going to show you guys that the inverse hyperbolic tangent of sin x is in fact the same as ln absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. And for the people who are in Cal 2, you guys know that these two are the possible results from the integral of secant x, right? However, sometimes when you're doing an integral, if you do with two different approaches, you may end up with two different looking results, just like this. However, in this case, they are in fact exactly the same thing. And let me show you guys how. I'm going to show you from the left-hand side that this is indeed the same as the right-hand side. But first, I will have to know what's the inverse hyperbolic tangent. And you can check out the link in the description. I have done all the detailed steps for you guys in that video, but in this video, I will just show you guys what the result is, okay? So first, we will have to know that the inverse hyperbolic tangent of something, let me just use x right here, this is in fact also an ln function. This right here is 1 half ln parentheses 1 plus the input, which is x, all right? And then we divide it by 1 minus the input again, 1 minus x, like this. So I'm just going to borrow this fact, and if you want to see all the details, please check out that video. And with that being said, you see right here, I will begin from the left-hand side. Let me write this down again. The inverse hyperbolic tangent of sine x, okay? Now the input is sine x. I just had to plug in sine x into this x and that x. That's how I'm going to start off with this, right? So this is going to be the same as 1 half ln parentheses, and we will have 1 plus the input, which is sine x now. And we divide it by 1 minus the input, which is the sine x, like this, okay? And I'm not going to close the parentheses yet because I want to analyze what do we have for now. As you can see, this is in fact also an ln function, so that kind of match with the right-hand side. We're making progress, that's good. And let's compare the inside. This and the secant x plus tangent x. Can they be the same thing? Well, I am looking at this, 1 minus sine x. Do we know much about that? Is there any identity for it? No, right? However, I do know there is an identity I can use, but that's for this. If we have 1 minus sine square x. In fact, we know this much better, isn't it? Because 1 minus sine square x is nothing but just cosine square x. And if I can somehow produce a cosine square x in the denominator, well, we can somehow maybe come with secant x and tangent x from there, right? Well, this is 1 minus sine to the second power x. This is to the first power. But this right here, I can factor it. This is the same as saying 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x, isn't it? Right? This is just the difference of two squares. And if you look back here, we already have 1 minus sine x, which is that. All I need to do is multiply this by 1 plus sine x. And let's see what we get from there. Okay? So let me multiply this by 1 plus sine x. And of course, do the same thing on the top, 1 plus sine x. And this is the reason why I didn't close the parentheses earlier. And now I will close that parentheses in black, okay? And let's see what we have left right here. One half, and then we have the ln, still have that parentheses. In the denominator, one minus sine x times one plus sine x, you know this is going to be one minus sine square x, and I'm going to make a change to be cosine square x. So let me just put down cosine square x for the denominator now. And on the top, 1 plus sine x times 1 plus sine x. Should I multiply it out, or should I just keep it as how it is? Let me tell you guys that. Let me just write this as parentheses 1 plus sine x, and then raised to the second power. I am not going to multiply this out for good reason. Because, you see, this is to the second power, and on the bottom, we also have cosine x, and then raised to a second power, right? Let me show you guys one more detail. This is the same as 1 half ln parentheses, and let me just kind of factor out the power. We can write this as 1 plus 
sine x over cosine x. And then we raise both of these to the second power and then close that. Yes? Right, same thing, isn't it? And now, if you look at this, ln of something to the second power. By one of the log property, we can just take this power and then bring that to the front, isn't it? So what do we have right here? This is nothing but just 1 half times 2. Let me just put it down for one step for you. 2 over 2, right? 2 in the front, over 2, like this. And I can write this as ln, parentheses. Oh, here's a small detail, actually. Um, when you put the 2 in the front, I should not put on parentheses for you guys now. Here's a small detail. Let me write it down again right here. So this is what we know, number 1. This is what we know, number 2. And here is what we know, number 3. OK, when you have ln of x to the second power, right? This is what we have. For example, yes, you can bring the power to the front, and it looks like 2 ln x, like that. However, there's a domain issue to be legitimate. If you have this right here, if this is your original function, ln and then x to the second power, x, in fact, can be a negative number as well, because uh, you have to square that first, right? So for this, x can be negative, all right? For example, x could be negative 5, because you can have ln, parentheses, negative 5 for the x, and then square, and negative 5 square, you work that out, which is positive 25, and that's a legitimate number, OK? However, if you just have this, if you bring the 2 to the front, and you put the parentheses, well, technically, x cannot be negative 5 anymore, because <laughs> you have to get ln negative 5, like this. This is not allowed, isn't it? ln negative 5 is not allowed. It. And this is how you're going to fix this kind of situation. When you bring a 2 in the front, well, yes, it's 2 ln x. But I cannot use parentheses anymore. I will have to use absolute value. So that right here on the right-hand side, x can also be negative as well. All right? And you see, I can plug in negative 5 into this x if you have the absolute value. And yes, this will be the same as 2 ln uh, positive 5 after you apply the absolute value to it. OK? So when I brought the 2 to the front like this, technically, I do have to include the absolute value right here. I must change the parentheses to the absolute value, just like this situation. And here we see that inside here, we have two things on the top, 1 plus sine x, and then we have only one thing, the cosine x on the bottom, right? Let me split the fraction. So I will write this down as 1 over cosine x. And I will add it with sine x over cosine x, isn't it? This is sine x over cosine x, OK? And finally, what do we have? This is just 1, and I have the ln. And you see, that was the absolute value, huh? And we still have the absolute value as well. 1 over cosine x is what? secant x plus sine x over cosine x is what? Well, that's tangent x. I told you, this and that are the same, isn't it? And we are done. That is it.